Hi, I am Carl, and today we are going to unbox, assemble, and review this quarter scale Thanos from the Avengers Endgame movie by Iron Studios. So stay tuned. <laughs> Just so you guys know, this is the very first license piece that I have pre-ordered and it is also the first license piece that I will be reviewing here. My forwarder actually received this piece last March 4 but it took 71 days to get here in the Philippines. Anyway, I'm so psyched about this piece because I'm an avid Thanos fan and I really love MCU movies. So let's talk more about Thanos. So Thanos first appeared in the Invincible Iron Man issue number 55, released on February 1973. Thanos went a lot of changes in appearance in the comics. Although the movie was not comic accurate, armor-wise and maybe the anatomy, but he is still a badass either way. So without further ado, let's start the unboxing. Thanos came in the usual Iron Studios art box. Inside the box, we have a white styrofoam, strapped together and even taped on the sides for better protection. Good job, Iron Studios. On the first layer, we have Thanos himself without the head. He sort of came in one piece, but there are removable pieces in his body already that I will be discussing later. Everything's well secured. Iron Studios made sure nothing is moving while it's being transported. His upper armor is heavily wrapped as you can see. Next, we have his blade, and it's quite long. On the second layer, we have his left arm switch out. Next, we have his right arm with the iron gauntlet switch out. We have the infinity gauntlet which will be attached to the left arm. By the way, these are the deluxe switch outs. The standard pieces are already attached in his body while in the package. We have the first portrait, another deluxe switch out, and the second deluxe portrait switch out. The last portrait, which is the standard portrait. And finally, we have the base. And I got number 290. Before we start the assembly, I wanted to show you how I remove all the parts from his body first, since some parts are already attached while in the box. First, we're going to remove the front or upper plate. Then, we can remove the back plate. Lastly, both his arms. Now, it's time to assemble Thanos. First, we align the right foot to the peg and keyhole on the base. Should be pretty easy. Left foot should sit flush on the rocks on the other side. We must insert both arms before inserting the front and back plate to avoid accidents. After which, we can insert the back plate, then the front plate. Next, we can insert the portrait. The magnet should align itself easily. For the weapon, you can easily insert it to the right arm. Magnet should assist you and be sure the weapon does not hit the base. To change the arms, we must undo everything we did, starting by removing the head, then the front plate, and finally the back plate, so we can finally remove both arms. Now, we can insert the deluxe switch outs. We can easily connect the right arm, then the left arm, and finally the infinity gauntlet. And we are done. Let's look deeper into this quarter scale statue. So this is obviously a museum pose, with Thanos simply standing on a pile of rocks. Base is very simple. It's a pile of broken concrete where Thanos is standing. Some grass here and there, but totally looks like moss. You can see some iron rods sticking out. Be very careful not to break them since they are not removable. But I kinda like it though, that they are already in the base. Less time trying to figure out which rod goes to where. Am I right? Now Thanos' lower or boots looks really good. Paint is really great. This black area looks like it's made out of real leather. It has some little dirt on it. Sculpt is really good. It has a lot of detail and a lot of weathering all throughout. Now onto his legs. The armor is consistently sculpted from his boots up to his legs. Still a lot of weathering. Really shows that Thanos conquered a lot of enemies before facing the Avengers. The black leather looks really good. There's a lot more dirt compared to his boots. Paint and sculpt is excellent. Up to his torso, the sculpt is still very consistent as well as the paint. At first, I thought the purple skin tone was a little light based on photos. But when you actually see it in person, you can see that it's really what Thanos is in the movie. A lot of weathering and dirt on his armor. 
front and back. So, the first hand switch out is the one with the weapon. You can see the paint and sculpt is very consistent. The weapon also has a lot of weathering and damages. Clearly Thanos did fight a lot of enemies with this weapon. The hand does look that it's glued together. Issues with molding probably. Mine even has a hole on top. The paint where the weapon hits the hand looks ugly. But you and I gotta live with it. Because there's a big chance this is the switch out we want to display him with. By the way, the weapon is about 28 inches long. And it's the highest point of the statue. Next, we have the standard left arm. Nothing extraordinary, just a close fist hand. Came in one piece, paint and sculpt is consistent, molding is way way better than the right arm with the weapon. Next, we have the deluxe switch out. The one with the Hawkbuster gauntlet and snapping pose. The sculpt on the gauntlet is really good. There's a lot of detail here, damages and burns from the first snap that the Hulk did. Honestly, I really love the details. Paint is really good. You can really feel that the gauntlet was burned or was damaged by the first snap. Finally, we have the Infinity Gauntlet switch out. Again, sculpt and paint is really good. A lot of details on the gauntlet. This is almost perfect. Iron Studios did not provide a device or gadget that would make the gems light up. You have to purchase a small flashlight separately to make them glow. For a 1200 US dollar statue, they should have included it. Overall, it's as good as the Hulkbuster gauntlet. Would probably look weird if you displayed them together though. For the first portrait, we have the standard one. Paint and sculpt on the armor is consistent from the rest of his body. A lot of weathering all throughout. His face here is very simple. Not smiling or angry looking, just a simple museum portrait. Paint on his eyes are excellent, but the left eye does look a little smaller than the right one. Looks kinda weird to me. Next, we have the angry looking deluxe portrait. Everything is similar to the first one, except for his mouth. You can see his teeth with a little gloss effect. The sculpt on his teeth is very clean, and molding went really well as you can see. Lastly, the portrait without the helm, and also a deluxe portrait. It's kinda similar from the second portrait, but without the helm. And kinda similar from the first portrait, but not angry. Again, sculpt and paint is really good. Nothing to worry about the eyes either. So this piece weighs around 26.5 pounds, has a height of 30.7 inches, a width of 17.7 .7 inches, and a depth of 15.7 .7 inches. Overall, this piece is superb. It's the very first piece I considered a personal grail. If you are still undecided on this piece, I can definitely guarantee you that you will not regret your decision if you purchase it. This is a MCU inspired statue and not from the comics. Details is excellent. Sculpt and paint is very consistent and top notch. Really nothing worth mentioning that is negative except for the right hand. But almost all statues holding a weapon looks like that anyway. A very amazing work of art here. I also want to share to you guys some of my Thanos pre-orders. As you can see, I really love Thanos. But I will not be mentioning where I purchased those pieces since they are custom commissioned. Thanks for watching! Hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think of this MCU inspired Thanos in the comments below. Please subscribe to our channel for future content like this.